what's going on guys welcome back to the channel and today in this video as you guys can see by the title we are working on my family's 1966 chevrolet c10 step side now what we are doing today is we are removing all of the parts that we are going to be replacing and yeah so let's go ahead and get into it and i'll show you guys what we're replacing all right so coming underneath the hood here we've got a 230 straight six turbo thrift 3.8 liter l6 motor now what we're going to be removing today is the carburetor the fuel line from the carburetor to the fuel pump we're going to be removing the fuel pump as well alongside the intake manifold and the exhaust manifold now the intake manifold and the exhaust manifold those bolts I have been soaking with liquid wrench, PB blaster, pretty much anything that I could find as a lubricant like that uh, to crack those bolts free. For the past couple days, I've been spraying that on there. So the reason why we're replacing all of these parts is because, I'll start with the intake and the exhaust manifold. Uh, both of these are original to the truck. Mainly all of these parts are except this fuel line here they are both cracked and they're cracked on the underside here i can't really show you with the camera i can't really get in there but once we pull it out i'll show you guys what i'm talking about um those are cracked i've had some issues with this carburetor i believe this is a rochester b or a bv i'm, I'm not sure if i'm right on the bv part but i can't really remember what model this is i know it's made by rochester i have rebuilt this carburetor once before and we are still having a lot of issues out of it so when replacing the intake manifold we just decided to go ahead and replace the carburetor as well and last but not least we are replacing the fuel pump now i bought a replacement fuel pump for this uh, from carter and it did not fit even though it said that it would fit i i checked triple checked all that to make sure it would fit but it didn't fit so this is the original I thought I can put some Permatex thread sealant on the outlet line and the inlet lines here to see if it would stop the leaking, but it did not. So I went ahead and bought a whole new fuel pump. It's still a mechanical fuel pump from um, Carter. It's an entirely different one. So we're going to put that on there today as well. So let's go ahead and start taking apart everything that we see here. So this is going to be incredibly hard to, for me to film. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the fuel pump on this now this is really not a tutorial but i will go ahead and give you guys some insight on how to remove this first thing you want to do is remove the inlet uh, tube from the tank it's just a phillips head screwdriver then you want to remove the uh, outlet uh, fuel line here which i believe is a 13 and a 14 or i'm sorry a 13 and a 14 millimeter uh, wrench and then on the back here, the bolts holding it to the block are 13 millimeter bolts. Now, before we do that, just make sure if you are following along with this and doing this yourself, just make sure and have a fire extinguisher nearby. It could, depending on the temperature it is outside or just, you never know what's going to happen. So just make sure you have a fire extinguisher nearby when operating with fuel, um, anything fuel related, just in case. Now, also we want to put a some sort of a tub underneath our fuel pump. We can catch all of that gas. Now, the next thing that we're gonna do here is remove the carburetor. Now, to do that, we gotta remove this right here. I do not remember the size of this, but this is our vacuum advance line that goes to our distributor. And we've got to remove these two bolts on the bottom side of the carburetor that hold the entire carburetor onto the intake manifold. And also we have to disconnect <clears throat> this little zip tie this is what holding our choke cable on and remove the choke uh, cable from the choke back here on the back of the carburetor and we can completely remove it from the intake manifold all right so the next thing we're going to do after removing the carburetor is going to remove start disassembling our intake manifold and we're going to remove our uh, hose line here this hose line here and disassemble our uh, throttle cable linkage from the intake manifold as well and then we'll be right back. So I've removed those hoses and everything. Next, we're going to attempt to remove all of the exhaust and intake manifold bolts. Now, 
I have a method that I'm going to try, and I'm going to link the video down in the description box below on what I'm going to try. We're going to go ahead and try this, and I'm going to take my time with it, so we'll see you guys back when I have an update. So, after about 30, I give, I give myself 30 minutes maybe, maybe even 40 minutes. I got all of the bolts out for the exhaust and the intake manifold. And as you guys can see, after I removed this final bolt right here, it all just came off. It fell off. And there are all the bolts right there in order from back to front on what I removed. Now, like I said before, before I started working on this, I watched this video. I believe his name is Stephen Cox. Like I said, I'll link it in the description box below. Without that video, man, I probably would have never gotten these bolts out and I probably would have snapped a few of them off in the block. So I just wanna give a huge shout out. Thank you for that video. That helped me out a lot. If you have any trouble removing any stuck intake or exhaust manifold bolts, especially on a 66 C10 like me, Go watch that video, take some time, take a break from everything that you're doing and go watch that video. It helped me out a bunch. So let's go ahead and get back into it. All right, so I went ahead and removed the gasket. And as you guys can hear, my dogs are going ape shit, excuse my language, because my parts are here. But I just got. To, I just want you guys to take a look at this. This is an old Felpro gasket that came off of the manifolds. I believe that's aluminum. That's what it feels like at least. But it doesn't appear to have any damage on it at all. It's completely still intact, which is absolutely astonishing. So our next thing to do here is, so these bolts down here holding the exhaust manifold onto the actual exhaust itself, don't have any bolt heads on them due to heat, I believe. So we're gonna have to cut those out in order to remove this entire thing as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now, but before I do that, I need to remove that canister down there full of gas so nothing catches on fire. And we're gonna go ahead and do that, cut those bolts and remove our exhaust and intake manifold permanently. All right guys, so as you can see, We've got packages. So I've got my Headman headers here, and then everything else in there should be fuel pump, air filter assembly, carburetor, and the intake manifold. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to cut this box open with the headers, and we're gonna come into here. I can't cut these bolts connecting the two flanges together because I can't get an angle on them. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to get in here and cut the pipe somewhere. I'll probably just get in here and cut it right about there. But before I do that, I'm gonna open these up, take a look at them and show you guys what we've got and possibly only measure twice and cut once. So let's go ahead and crack that box open. All right guys, so we are here. We're gonna open up this uh, Headman headers box. We'll go ahead and cut all this stuff open and let's uh, see what we've got inside. Ooh, let's see. I don't exactly know how to open these up. There we go. Man, would you look at that. Uh, that right there, that's only one of them. There's two of them. These are the Headman Street Headers. I think I already said that, but I don't remember. That is awesome. Man, these are gonna be awesome. Very, they're long tubes. They've already got that high heat paint on there. Man, I'm really excited to get these installed. So that was the first one. Goodness. And here's the second one here. If you yeah, it even says there's a little badge on them right here. If you guys can see that or not. It says uh, Headman Headers. 
made in the USA. God bless America. All right. What else we got in here? We've got, so we've got a new gasket for the, this is for the intake manifold and the exhaust manifold, which is really nice. Okay, very nice. Can't exactly dive into this box. Let's just dump them out, I guess. All right. Last but not least, ooh, man, we got stickers, y'all. I don't even, I don't even really care about that. I just like the stickers. I'm kidding. Uh, these are, we've got some some uh, flanges and some tubing and, oh, the new uh, exhaust hardware, which is really nice. So, so what my next step is, is to, I'm probably gonna place, probably just gonna measure a lot. I don't really know exactly how to do this. This is my first time doing this, as you guys can probably tell. Um, I'm probably gonna measure a couple times and then cut the exhaust pipe where I need to cut it, or I might just cut it a little bit short um, so we can actually fit the exhaust manifolds in there to measure and cut. So I don't know, I'll figure it out. So let's get to it. All right, so as you guys can see, it is out completely. So what I did, ended up doing, I didn't measure or anything uh, on the exhaust, but I just went ahead and cut it at the shortest angle that I could just to get this thing out of here because what I'm gonna have to do anyway when I go to put the new one back or the new uh, exhaust back in is as you guys can see, the flanges on those bend and go out. So I'll have plenty of room to cut this and or measure and then cut it. So I'll have plenty of room to do that. So the next thing we're going to do, since we got all of this out on both sides, I'm going to plug the holes with some cloth or some paper towels or whatever. And then we're going to get to deep cleaning this engine. And I'll show you exactly how to do that. So as you guys can see here, I have plugged all the holes with shop rags. Same for right there. And what we're gonna do is we're going to degrease all of that nasty and built up grease. I don't even know if the camera's really picking it up. There it is. All right, so what we're gonna do is use Super Clean. If you guys haven't checked out Super Clean and their products, man, y'all are missing out. And we're not going to dilute this at all, so we're not gonna cut in with water or anything. We're just gonna use this straight on. Now, spray non heavy duty degreaser is also really good, but I'm not going to be using it. This is about empty, so I'm gonna empty out this bottle and wash it out, or just empty out the bottle entirely and not wash it out. And then uh, add a lot, all of this and fill it up. And what we're gonna do, if you have spray non, which I recommend using spray non and spray non only, because it seems to me is the only one that works. I've used Pond Saw and everything like that. So get your spray non and heavily douse this area and all of the grease that you can see. Let it sit on there for a minute or so, but don't let it dry and just keep spraying it and keep spraying it and keep spraying it, layering it on. And then eventually you can take, let's see if I can find one here. You can take a screwdriver, a flathead, or you can take a some sort of a pick or a brush or anything like that and you can get in there and scrape all that grease completely off now don't expect to spray this spray nine on there one time let it sit and then all of it's going to come off because that's not going to that's not the way it works you got to be patient with it like you were taking off exhaust manifold bolts you got to be patient so spray it on there a few times but don't let it dry and get to work on this and scrub all of that grease off and then you can lightly rinse it with some water so i'll tow my water hose over here and spray it off with some water once i'm done so let's get to cleaning so as you guys can see i cleaned up a little bit here i didn't get all of the grease off but i got a good amount of it off down there um but i just wanted to clean a, a good amount of it off not all of it 
because later on in the future i will be taking this motor out and painting it and making it look brand new what i'm going to do is i'm going to pull all the rags out of the side where the exhaust and the intake manifold bolts go and i'm going to test fit our um exhaust manifolds into place coming down right here this is our exhaust pipe right we're obviously going to have to get underneath the truck and cut some more of that out now right here this is our clutch linkage if you're picturing this in your head like i am this hole right here is the only place for our exhaust manifolds to go all right guys so i'm gonna cut in right here so basically what the rest of the video was was me wondering if i'm gonna have to move my shift linkage in order to install the exhaust manifolds so i basically what i did was explain what, how i'm gonna bend the exhaust tubing and all that stuff but i don't need to do that anymore and you don't need to either so i'll link everything in this video in the description box below all the parts and everything the street headers the headman street headers that are in this video are made for the 230 the 250 and the 292 i believe that's it if i'm wrong you can just check the description box below but or the link in the description box below um so the bins in the tubing on the back manifold are bent to go around that shift linkage so what i'm going to have to do in the next video we're going to just uh, unbolt the clutch linkage uh, on the block side install our manifold completely and then reinstall the clutch linkage i didn't know that until now so let's go ahead and get back into the outro of this video all right guys i'm gonna end this video right here i stink i deserve a shower and some supper but this is part one to a new series on the c10 if you guys are excited for part two and more videos on this truck leave me a like down below leave me a comment as well and subscribe for more videos like this more are coming guys part two will be posted here in a new in a couple weeks and we'll see you guys in the next video peace